Welcome everyone. Today we're going to get right into the practical side of things, exploring semaglutide 2.4 mg for obesity management. We'll look at the clinical evidence, of course, but also how to really apply it in our day-to-day -day practice. You know, for so long, the conversation around obesity has been boiled down to this really simple, almost simplistic idea. But as clinicians, we're on the front lines, and we know that the eat less, move more mantra just doesn't capture the whole story. So let's start by challenging that old frame of mind and really look at obesity for what it is, a complex chronic disease. The reality is so many different paths can lead to obesity. We're up against some powerful forces here. You've got the brain's own intricate systems for appetite control. You've got genetics, which can account for a huge chump, up to 70% of a person's weight. And then you layer on top of that all the psychological, social, and environmental pressures. It's, well, it's a complicated picture, and it really validates the struggle our patients face. And how many times have we heard a story just like this in our clinics? It's just heartbreaking. This patient's experience perfectly captures that frustrating reality of the body's own defense mechanisms. It's not a failure of willpower. It's a powerful biological response that actively promotes weight regain. This is why lifestyle changes alone are often not enough to sustain weight loss long term. So the big question is, how do we push back against that biology? This is where semaglutide 2.4 milligram or Wegovi really changes the game. It works by targeting the central nervous system itself, the actual command center for appetite. To really get how it works, we have to think about the brain's two main drivers for eating. First, there's homeostatic eating. That's your basic, I need fuel, I'm hungry, drive. But then there's hedonic eating, which is all about pleasure and reward. It's a totally different pathway and any truly effective therapy has to tackle both. And that's exactly what Wegovy does. As a GLP-1 receptor agonist, it gets into key areas of the brain, like the hypothalamus and hindbrain, and directly helps regulate appetite. It's much more than just a gut hormone. You really have to think of it as a neurohormonal agent. This dual action is what's so fascinating. On the homeostatic side, it cranks up the satiety signals, so patients feel fuller and just less hungry. At the same time, on the hedonic side, it helps dial down those food cravings, even shifting what foods they prefer. Having a tool that works on both fronts is, frankly, a massive leap forward. Okay, so the mechanism makes sense, but what does it actually do for our patients? For that, we turn to the data from the STEP clinical trial program, which gives us a really solid look at its efficacy and impact. Let's just start with the headline number from the big STEP 1 trial, a mean weight reduction of nearly 17%. Compare that to just 2.4% in the placebo group. I mean, that's a magnitude of effect that we just haven't been able to offer patients with older pharmacotherapies. It's truly in a different league. And it's not just about the average. When you look at how many patients hit those really meaningful weight loss milestones, the numbers are just incredible. More than 9 out of 10 patients lost at least 5% of their body weight. Almost 3 quarters lost more than 10%. And over half lost more than 15%. These are numbers that really change lives. And look at this. More than one in three patients achieved a weight loss of 20% or more. That's getting into the territory we used to only associate with bariatric surgery, and now we have the potential to get there with a the medication. And of course, it's not just about the number on the scale. Critically, these benefits translate into major improvements in cardiometabolic health. We're seeing a significant drop in waist circumference, about 15 centimeters, systolic blood pressure down by over 7 points, and a nearly 60% reduction in C-reactive protein. These are huge wins for cardiovascular risk reduction. Okay, the evidence is compelling, no doubt about it. So let's pivot to the really practical stuff. How do we take this data and translate it into effective care in our own clinics? So who are the right candidates? The indications are pretty clear-cut. It's for adults with a BMI of 30 or higher, or a BMI of 27 or higher if they have at least one weight-related comorbidity. And what's really important, especially for many of us, is the indication to reduce the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events, MACE, in adults who already have cardiovascular disease. Now, this is probably one of the most important slides for patient success, the titration schedule. We start low, at 0.25 milligrams, and go slow, increasing the dose every four weeks. This gradual step-up approach is absolutely key. It's designed specifically to help the body adapt and to minimize those potential GI side effects. And what happens when life gets in the way? Well, if a patient is struggling with GI symptoms, you have flexibility. You can just hold them at their current dose for an extra four weeks before trying to move up. And for missed doses, the advice is simple. If it's been less than five days, take it as soon as you remember. 
If it's been longer, just skip it and get back on track with the next scheduled dose. Proactive counseling here is everything. Setting patients up with these simple tips can make a world of difference for their experience, especially during that initial titration period. Things like eating smaller, low-fat meals, slowing down, and not lying down right after eating can really help manage any transient nausea. All right, let's talk about the long game. This is a question that comes up in almost every patient conversation. How long do they need to be on this medication? It's the natural question, right? I've hit my goal weight. I feel great. Can I stop now? And this is where managing expectations with solid data is absolutely critical. The Step 1 Extinction Study gives us a very clear and, honestly, a very stark answer. You can see here, patients lost over 17% of their weight on the drug. But after they stopped it, within a year, they had regained a huge portion of that lost weight. The underlying biology of obesity hadn't gone away. So the bottom line is pretty unambiguous. When you stop the treatment, patients tend to regain about two-thirds of the weight they lost. And just as importantly, those great cardiometabolic benefits we saw, they also start to reverse. It really drives home the point, obesity is a chronic disease that requires chronic therapy, just like we do for high blood pressure or high cholesterol. And just a quick note on its utility in some of our most complex patients. For those with prediabetes, an incredible 8 out of 10 reverted to normal blood sugar levels. And in patients who already had type 2 diabetes, 82% of them were able to get their HbA1c down below that key target of 7%. So, let's tie it all together. What are the key takeaways for your practice? First, this therapy offers clinically meaningful, sometimes even surgical level weight loss. Second, that weight loss comes with significant improvements in cardiometabolic health. And third, the keys to success in the clinic are managing those early GI side effects with slow titration and counseling and framing this from the very beginning as a long-term therapy for a chronic disease. And that leaves us with a final thought to consider. We finally have tools that can effectively target the core neurobiology of appetite. This isn't just about one new drug. It feels like we're at a real turning point. This could fundamentally reshape how we think about, manage, and ultimately destigmatize obesity as the chronic relapsing disease it is.